Ethan Van Skyver was driven from mainstream comics through slander and bullying. Through perseverance, self-belief, and God-given talent, he's a bigger player in the industry today than ever before. Ethan Van Skyver has been in the comic book industry his entire adult life. He published his creator-owned character, Cyberfrog, at age 20 in 1994. Van Skyver rose from unknown indie artist to one of the finest visual stylists in comic book history. He's best known for his collaborations with Jeff Johns at DC Comics. Together they created Flash Rebirth, Green Lantern Rebirth, Sinestro Core Wars, and many other hit books for DC Comics. His art and creative inputs on the Green Lantern mythos generated tons of revenue for DC Comics. He is the definitive Green Lantern artist. No other artist has done it better. No other artist is as synonymous with the character. Period. Van Skyver is an open supporter of Donald Trump's campaign and presidency. After Trump's victory in 2016, he was the victim of comic industry reprisal on social media. Alleged art thief Tim Doyle, famous e-beggar Kieran Shake, comic industry never was Daryl Ayo, and others targeted EVS and his employer DC Comics. They called him Nazi, alt-right, bigot, homophobe, and every other buzzword the radical left used to defame people these days. Around the same time, Ethan began his own YouTube channel and connecting with readers more than ever before. During these attacks, DC Comics never publicly supported Van Skyver. Ethan gave the vast majority of his adult life to the company and their characters. They stood silent while a hate mob who never contributed one thing to the company or the industry tried to tear him apart. I can't imagine how it feels to give your entire adult life to an industry and art form you love just to have them all turn their backs and try to feed you to the wolves. It was truly an ultimate betrayal. Eventually, he asked for an early release from his contract with DC Comics. He concentrated on growing his YouTube channel. He also began defending himself against slanderous allegations on social media. He became a champion and leader of sorts in Comicsgate, a consumer movement aimed at removing ideological propaganda from comics, preserving hero legacies, and demanding decent behavior from professionals in the comic book industry. In mid-2018, he revived his dormant Cyberfrog character and launched a record-breaking crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. Initially, he raised over $500,000 for his campaign. He launched two subsequent variant cover campaigns and gave new fans a chance to support the project. In total, Cyberfrog Blood Honey has over 14,000 backers and over $800,000 raised in support of the project. It was originally scheduled to ship in November 2018. He's a bit late on delivery. That led to many of his detractors calling his backers suckers, claiming EVS ripped them off and was running off with their money. Time for some assholes to eat a whole lot of crow. Ethan messaged backers with the first 19 pages comprising chapter one of Cyberfrog Blood Honey. Fully colored and lettered. They aren't high res or fully sized images, but I'm gonna preview the book nonetheless. This is as excited as I've been about a comic book in some time. I'm not likely to receive a digital copy of the complete graphic novel. I'm also overseas, so my physical copy will arrive months after the book has already been spoiled and reviewed to death. This may be my only chance to review Cyberfrog, so let's get to business. EVS is one of the finest comic artists in history. Blood Honey has a seemingly impossible bar to clear. Somehow, he manages to exceed expectations for his record-breaking Cyberfrog graphic novel. Ethan is known for his exceptional eye for details. He's taken it to another level in Blood Honey. This image of Cyberfrog being born is absolutely stunning. The perspective of a simple frog being assimilated by alien technology is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in a graphic novel. And I would be remiss not to mention the amazing work of color artist Kyle Ritter. His work is exceptionally vibrant and oozes a cool factor most other comics don't. The extreme detail of Van Skyver's work can be very challenging. Kyle helps make Blood Honey a premium visual experience. Ritter sent a package of his work to Van Skyver years ago. Now he's one half of the team behind the biggest crowdfunding graphic novel in history. The first chapter is mostly an origin story. When Van Skyver and Ritter finally put Cyberfrog in action, it's amazing. The scenes are very dynamic, and the action poses of Cyberfrog are fantastic. I do think the chair in the bottom panel is far too large in comparison to Heather Swain's body. That's my one criticism of the art in chapter one. 
The last image of Chapter 1 shows Cyberfrog in Salamandroid's mothership stuck in the honeycomb of the invaders they were sent to protect Earth from. There are very few artists in the industry that can make anything of this quality. It's a seemingly innocuous page. EVS put his heart and soul in this book. He didn't need to add detail of this level to this page, but he did. He wants his backers to receive the most impressive graphic novel he's capable of. I've heard some people say Ethan is an overrated artist. Anyone that's read his stories knows these people are motivated by hateful ideology, jealousy, or plain ignorance. I've seen fully rendered images not included in this preview. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I rate the art in Cyberfrog Blood Honey Chapter 1, 5 out of 5. I back Cyberfrog knowing Ethan's visuals would be phenomenal. His ability to write characterization, dialogue, and plot are another story. One of the biggest issues I've had with Richard C. Meyer's Jawbreaker's Lost Souls, John Malin's Graveyard Shift, and other crowdfunded books I've backed is story compression. Creators compact five to six single issues of material that would normally be 100 to 130 pages in 50 pages or less. Ethan Van Skyver's Cyberfrog Blood Honey doesn't appear to suffer this issue. The first 19 pages tell a well-constructed origin story that has room to breathe. It's not the frenetic pace other books are. It's very refreshing. The Perdani became aware that Vispiz are coming to Earth. They dispatched a living ship with the ability to create new life, teach, and nurture new offspring. The ship races to Earth to intervene on its behalf, landing in New Jersey in 1996. The ship arrives with twins ready to be delivered, but needs to assimilate them with a terrestrial life form. The Perdani are expecting to find human hosts, but none are available. The twins are born and select a frog and salamander as host forms. Cyberfrog is born. His mother's ship appoints him protector of Earth. The ship teaches Cyberfrog the local dialect. She tells him he must obey her and she will prepare him for battle. As long as Cyberfrog and his mother are connected, she will adjust and enhance his body for battle. His appendages can turn into massive machine guns. Mother explains to Vizpiz are a conquering swarm. They see humans as livestock. Blood is the nectar that becomes honey to sustain them. Mother tells him to help humans and be prepared to die for them. Cyberfrog then meets his brother Salamandroid. He appears to be four to five times larger than his amphibian sibling. This is no accident. He's created to clear a path for the titular hero. Mother appoints Salamandroid the protector of Cyberfrog. Mother heads beneath the surface of a small pond to monitor her twin sons. Cyberfrog changes as she watches over him. He starts his mission with optimism, sympathy, and compassion for humans. She never prepares Cyberfrog for the fact they have none for him. No matter how many lives he saves, he does not look like one of their own. He's rejected and worn down by the very people he saves. Cyberfrog is committed to his mission but carries no love for humans. Until he meets Heather Swain, beaten down by life herself, she chooses a dangerous path. She's attacked by a human infected by the swarm in a cemetery. Cyberfrog rescues her and promises to always look out for her. She sees Cyberfrog as the true hero he is. Cyberfrog finally has a real friend and connection to the people he was created to save. She names him and his brother Cyberfrog and Salamandroid. The final shot is of their mother stuck in the blood-fueled honeycomb, claiming all hope is lost. I really enjoyed Ethan Van Skyver's Cyberfrog origin story. Our three main heroes all have well-established origins and motivations. The threat is identified, and the story is well-placed. I rate the writing in Cyberfrog Blood Honey, Chapter 1, 4 out of 5. The first chapter of Cyberfrog Blood Honey is an exciting start. I believe the story jumps ahead 20 years after the arrival of the Vizbiz. From the preview art, the story is going to be action-packed and gory at times moving forward. The opening 19 pages are beautifully illustrated, as expected. I rate Cyberfog Blood Honey, Chapter 1, 4.5 out of 5 overall. I truly hope this book distributes to the direct market. The work of Van Skyver is very impressive and merits the opportunity to compete on the open market. He recently started a new campaign selling his own Cyberfog variant covers of Dynamite Entertainment's Vampirella. Who knows? He has a business relationship with them of some type. Perhaps the next rabbit out of Van Skyver's hat is his all caps comics competing on the direct market due to a publishing agreement with Dynamite Entertainment. There is plenty of crow for his haters to eat. 
Cyber Frog Blood Honey is complete. It's going to print very soon. People all over social media will soon be posting pics of a book that Tractor said would never happen. The book is real. The scam is like everything else said by Ethan's accusers. Complete and utter bullshit and outright lies. He's likely to launch his long-awaited Rainbow Brute campaign soon after. Ethan Van Skyver was driven from mainstream comics through slander and bullying. Through perseverance, self-belief, and God-given talent, he's a bigger player in the industry today than ever before. All hail Caesar. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.